Right. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to yet another webinar on SMO. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Pranoti. I'm the customer service officer with SMO and uh, with Child Safe, and I've been in this organization for the last nine months. Um, before we get started into the webinar, I'd like to uh, just run past a few housekeeping rules. One is um, I would like to check if you can hear me. Uh, that's one. On the bottom, you can see a chat window. I'd like to use that the, I'd like to use the chat window to run questions. So if you have any questions, I would request you to put it on the chat window so that I can read through them and we can take it further. I'm just saying hi through the chat window. Um, I'll be sharing my screen as well. So I'll be sharing the SMO demo site with you as well. And uh, we are, yeah, we'll be taking questions, you know, as and when. So please feel free to uh, jump in with your questions, put your questions on the chat window and uh, we'll take it from there. I have, for the purpose of this recording and for this webinar, I have, um, I have muted the speaker, so the, I can't hear the audience speakers. Um, I'd like all the queries to come in through the chat window. I hope you find this webinar useful and it helps you to grow you know, better in your understanding of how do we use SMO and especially how um, uh, we use SMO to manage incidences, to manage our reporting and um, uh, resource and how 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 can the various resources within SMO help you to improve safety management practices within your organization and help create safe and uh, safe environments for children and vulnerable people. <clears throat> cool. Um, yes. So for those of you who are new, SMO is basically safety management online. That is. A risk management tool which we use, uh, which uh, we use within the organization. A lot of you have subscribed to it, and it basically helps you to manage your child safety practices. Uh, we've done various webinars in the past. Uh, we've done webinars around the people function, around programs. Um, there would be a few upcoming webinars. The one of our main objectives is to do a webinar every month to connect with our customers and uh, to help you to strengthen your safety, child safety management practices. Uh, today, we'll be looking at incident reporting. We'll be looking at three different tabs in the SMO section. The first one is incident reporting. The second one is resources. I'll just give you a quick overview of the various resources that are available within SMO and how you can use them. And the third one we'll be looking at exception reporting. Resources and exception reporting are typically available only to administrators. So people who have an access level of an administrator can access, you know, resources advanced features of the resources section and also exception reporting. But incident reporting is available to all the people who are at team leader and above level. Cool. So um, I hope everyone can see me and everyone can share, uh, can see the screen that I have shared. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Can you all See my, um, can you all see my screen? The system, which we call as, uh, the site is SMO, uh, demo.smo.org.au. And today we'll be looking at the incident reporting section within SMO. Now, incident, reportings, incident reporting is available for team leaders and above. Um, incident reporting forms an important process in managing child safety practices. It, it also, so, uh, in terms of, you know, how an organization should manage, what kind of incidences should an organization rep report, and, you know, in terms of the legalities about incident reporting, you can have a read through the team leader's guide, 
and page 23 of the team leaders guide talks a lot about incidences. One is obviously how incidences can be avoided and what kind of incidences must be reported. It also talks about what are the types of incidences that require emergency response and so on and so forth. So there, there is a lot about emergency response procedures. There's a lot about, you know, what kind of incidences need to be, uh, where do you need an emergency response team to, to come in? And that is a part of, part of the organization policy. For the purpose of this webinar, we are actually going to be looking at how do we create incident reports within SMO. And as I said earlier, SMO is safety management online. So uh, to create incidences, I will first go to, as I said earlier, I go to dashboard, I go to the I log in as an SMO user, I go to incident, and this page comes up. I will explain what these pages mean a bit, uh, this main screen means a bit later, but we will first go to inc adding incidences with an SMO. Now you can see that there are there are different fields. Some fields are mandatory and some are not mandatory. The first field is incident category. So basically here we are looking at what type of incident is it? Is it a complaint? Is it an incident, a critical incident and near miss? What we are then looking at the incident type. Now this incident type is critical, is important because the based on this incident type, some of the fields will change. For example, if I click in physical injury, if you see, if I click physical injury, then we have exact dates and exact times. And these might be important for you to basically, uh, these would be important, especially for providing proof for insurance and so on uh, for other you know, statutory reporting. So some of the fields, as I said earlier, might change depending upon the incident type. The in the incident type. Um, say if I pick up another, say if I pick up neglect. If you look at, when, if I pick up incident type as neglect, then in that case, you see there is no particular date and time. Obviously, there are some incidences which, you know, would have a particular time. I mean, some incidences would be related to, would be related to time, whereas some of these incidences would be probably an ongoing issue, but as team leaders, you'd like to, you'd like to record them. So let's take a simple, uh, let's take physical injury for now. I'm taking the example of physical injury. So I'm saying the complaint is in, it's, it's an incident. It's a category. The incident category is um, an incident. It's an incident of physical injury and nature of the event. So I would say broken, broken leg or yeah, I'll just say burns during a camp. And then we put the incident date. You can backdate it as well to us, depending again on the statutory, you know, reporting the event time, but I'm for, for the purpose of this webinar, I'm just going to say event date is today. Event time, I'll put it as 10 o'clock. Location name, very important. So I'll just say ABCD Park. Okay, now there are, there's a distinction here. When we say location name, you could put in the name of the sub suburb or you could say the park or you can say ABCD Park and exact place. I, I, I'll say near the children's playground. So this is just to distinguish between, you know, the, 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 the overarching location and the exact place. The next one would be the program name. Now, was this incident a part of the program? And again, uh, this is again related to all the programs that you have probably um, listed in your organization, or you can say other program, and you can add any more information in there. You can select the team leader. Now this depends if if someone if a coordinator is creating an event, then he can select the team leader's name. So um, that's about creating an incident. I will use a team leader. So now 
so the team the team leader's name is now created within the incident and then you can add the parties to the incident now who are the parties to the incident you can add as many parties so say i've said add you click on add new party and then you have party type so was this a party a victim an informant alleged perpetrator and i'm sure you might understand that we have these various categories because you know we are trying to populate and we are cat trying to categorize various incidents within um within the system so at the moment i'm using i'll say party type victim name of the victim was smith given name john and additional details such as his home phone number work phone mobile address suburb postcode gender date of birth party role now what was the role of this party during the incident i would say he was a participant what led to this party's involvement in the incident add attach report if the if there is insufficient space save the okay one thing that we need to understand is in order to uh, to for the file upload to happen we would first need to save this in save this party we would also need to save the incident once i save the incident the various file upload sections would would automatically get activated so if you look here now i can attach documents for the for the party so that's one uh in terms because it was a physical injury because i have said it's physical injury over here you can see there are some additional fields that have popped up party role we saw earlier the part of the body injured so which was the injured part body part nature of the injury we said burn earlier so we'll put it as burn cause of severe wrist injury burns and severity assessment first aid that means state at the program hospital possible permanent disability and fatal now i'm not an expert at incident reporting as in from a policy and first aid and from a medical perspective i'm not an expert or i'm not not trained in ohs you know health and safety protocol um so i might not be able to answer the finer details but the objective of this webinar is to basically show you what you can do within the system for how smo can support you to manage your um incident reporting uh incident reporting policy within the organization and then yes there are various fields um some of these questions might be needed for insurance purposes so for example protective equipment was protective equipment and safety device being used so there are there are a whole lot of questions for you to um, you know for you to answer so once that is saved you can then go to the then there are there's details of the incident a bit more of more details were there instructions given before the event so again this is all keeping in mind you know organization health and safety or workplace health and safety or health and safety practices again were the parents notified what was the follow up were there any photographs was the police notified and again as i said earlier detailed um detailed um policy or detailed process is available to you in the in s in the team leaders guide which is available which you, which might be sitting in your organization from page 23 onwards so once these details are all added the team leader then says submit to coordinator yes so an email then triggers from smo which says you know so sm smo will send an email to the coordinator saying that an incident has been recorded the coordinator will then log in and he will assess the incident and you can see coordinator assessment here final steps and submission of this report severity assessment coordinator comments and recommendations incident status and the user created and again the comment the the coordinator can upload files and documents and then save the incident summary so that's about incident reporting within smo 
once all the incidences are saved, we um, and the assessment is done, we recommend that some incidences may be archived, you know, just to uh, to maintain confidentiality. And again, those are all organization uh, decisions. So once all the incidences are recorded within the system, you can see all the, uh, you can see a quick snapshot of the various incidences. You can filter. SMO gives you the functionality to filter based on category. I can filter based on all the categories of incidents. Yes, I do understand some of them are wrongly categorized, and that's just because I've been testing. Um, you can you can um, filter based on incident types. You can filter on the basis of incident groups as, uh, on the groups as well. And that's one reason why we need to create you know, groups and assign the right coordinators to the right group. And then also you can filter based on active and archived incidents. For those of you who are new to the system, you can see some actions over here. Edit means you can edit an incident. Act uh, archive is to archive an incident. Um, Save SMO will not allow you to delete any information within the system. Um, therefore, the archive functionality is available to, uh, to all functions. So be it programs, be it people, be it incidences, SMO will not allow you to delete any information. And the reason is we'd like to maintain a timestamp for every, every document that is uh, entered into the system. You can archive. Um, you can archive information, you can archive people, you can archive program, and in this case, you can also archive incidents. So uh, if I hit archive, it says, are you sure you wish to archive this item? And then say, okay. And then you can also filter, filter based on active and archive inc incidences in SMO. So I can, if I click on archive, and I can see all the incidences that have been archived within SMO as well and you can print out incidences. So that's about incident um, management. If you have any questions, I'm happy to take them on right now. Uh, one of our expert users has said that yes, a coordinator can review. A team leader needs to create an incident and a coordinator can review. If a coordinator creates an incident, then it's, uh, then it's the RMO or the administrator who should review the incident. That's right. Um, there are not there are no questions, so I'll move on to the next one, which is um, resources. And again, I will share my screen with you. Okay. So resources is available, as I said earlier, is available to administ to all levels. All people can view resources within the system from team leader and above. There are team and team members can view resources too. So there are resources within the sec within SMO which are only for team members. There are resources which are for team leaders and above. There are resources for coordinators and RMO. So there are some resources which are only available to certain people depending upon the access level. And what I'd like to stress at the moment is how do we add resources? Now, um, the reason I'm saying this is that, uh, you know, you can add as an admin, as an administrator, you can add resources within SMO. And the reason, and you can add your own site resources. So if you add a resource within SMO, you will have SMO demo site resources, and then the site, the resources will available here, will be available here. So let's see how do we add resource. So you, you can click add, res, go to resources and click on add resource, and then you can write a resource name. Say, um, I want to say, XYZ is my organization, XYZ child save policy new. And then I can, I can describe it. I can also say which level of people can access this resource. 
I can also customize it to a particular division. So for example, if I think a particular group within a particular division within the organization uh, needs access to the res to this resource and it can be only for that particular division, then you can add that resource in there within that particular division. And similarly, you can add it within that particular division and then choose a file and it'll get uploaded as I said earlier, as SMO site resources. Um, rather, it'll be your organization site resources. So if your organization uh, is, you know, XYZ, then it will be XYZ site resources and people can access the resource, sec uh, can access that particular resource. There are a whole lot of resources available to you from ChildSafe, which you can access to. You can also customize it and you can add it as well. I'd also like to add that the administrator, however, doesn't have the ability to delete or add or delete or edit any of the child safe resources. So you cannot, uh, when I say you, um, an administrator can download this resource. Say for example, if I am an administrator, I want to download a resource, I can download it, I can make changes and I can upload it and it would come up over here as XYZ site resources. At no point in time would you be allowed to, you know, edit or remove any resources which are which are listed under child safe resources so that's about the resource section reporting so what do i mean by exception reporting exceptions within smo are any any appointments or training which have expired or anything related to expiry of training and appointments is considered to be an exception within smo and smo has given administrators the facility to be reported on these exceptions and you can you as an administrator can enable or disable these exceptions depending upon how you have set it up now there is exceptions available as i said earlier for appointment and there is exception reporting available for training so what do i mean by this if these exceptions are enabled or disabled then on the first of every month SMO will send you an in, will send an email reporting on those exceptions. In other words, it means that if you have appointments which are listed here, as you can see, I have four appointments. And if I had enabled these appointments and set all exceptions to administrator, and say if I want to know which are my which are the blue cards or the working equal blue card is a term used in in uh, Queensland, um, but if I want to know which of my blue cards or working with children's check, the people whose blue cards and working with children's check is expiring in the next one month. If I change this and put it as one month, on the first of every month, an SMO will send me an email, a trigger email, uh, listing, a, list, listing the names of all those people whose, whose blue card is expiring in the next one month. Similarly, if you, if, you, if you would like to set it up for four months, you can set it up for four months. It's totally dependent on you. And the same feature is also available at training level two. At training level, if you want to know which of the training is expiring, whose, ex, whose training is expiring in the next one, in the next two months or in the next Depending on each level, if you want to know how many of your team leaders training training is expiring in the next three months, you can um, you can you can put it over there, and an email will come to you. Now, the reason why we have all exceptions report unnotified exceptions to administrator or all exceptions to administrator is because you can if you see here additional routing delivery config email routing email delivery routing configuration, it, it is available to you at group level and at division level. Now what happens is if I, if I enable, if I disable this, and then I say, I go back to my people and I go to groups and say I pick up a group. I pick up Remo group. Within here, you can see 
group appointment exception handling, no exception to coordinator or administrator. But if I select exceptions to coordinator only and group training exceptions coordinate to coordinator only, then in this case, the administrator will not receive an email, but the coordinators for those groups will receive an email. So you can configure it the way, you know, how you want information to flow across your organization. Again, the reason why we've created it is because we have organizations which are based at national level, and there are some organizations which are, are based at national level and have, you know, different territories, and they would like to give more autonomy to their group, uh, to their coordinators and help them manage information. Whereas there are some organizations which are smaller and therefore the administrator is more in touch with all the people and would like to have, you know, there's one person managing the entire system. So it's typically based on how you would like the information to flow within your organization. And similarly, I can have the same, I can have the, as I said earlier, you can have the, uh, you can have the same reporting available at at group level and at division level too. So for example, if I look, take up host, host is my division. And then if I go down, I can see all exceptions to RMO for group exception, division training exception, divisional training exception handling, no exceptions or all exceptions or unnotified exceptions to RMO. This is again, totally up to you. And yes, one important point is to save it. So that way the, uh, the, admin, the information will flow within the organization. So that's about exception reporting. And uh, as I said earlier, it's a tab that is available to all administrators. If you as an administrator cannot see this tab, please feel free to write to me. My, um, my email and my contact number is listed in, the, in my signature as well. So that was a very, that was a short webinar and I'm sharing, I'm stopping my sh screen share and would like to, if you, if there are any questions, if you have any questions, I'd like to take them on board. Um, while we are here, I'd also like to uh, acknowledge your presence and thank you for coming and um, being with us. Uh, a quick, another quick question would be what, for future webinars, what kind of topics, uh, you know, you would like within SMO. If you can add them in the chat window, I'd appreciate that so that I can take them on board and, you know, can, can plan for a webinar in future around those topics. There's a question coming. Um, so is that, is that an, is, is that a topic that you'd like to see within uh, SMO, as in, sorry, within webinars or, okay, a future topic, cool. I, I don't see any more responses coming in, so I, um, I'll end the webinar for now. Thank you very much for your time and appreciate you coming on board. And um, I would say, please encourage uh, your people, um, you know, your volunteers or team leaders and coordinators to, to attend the webinars as well. Good. Thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you.